Hello everyone and welcome to the channel and uh, this episode is uh, sponsored by Michael Steffen. Uh, he was one who was gracious enough to contact me and uh, he could have thrown this equipment away uh, but uh, he decided he would contact me and I went and picked them up. Uh, so what we have here is a weed eater, a gas trimmer, we have a black and decker hedge trimmer and then we have an electric weed eater uh, weed whacker so I think the first thing I'm going to do is focus my attention on this weed eater now he did say it was sitting around for a couple years uh, so it could be a carburetor issue but we're going to look at it, everything and uh, see what's going on with it but I want to thank Mike again uh, for giving these up uh, it's like I said he could have easily just thrown them away someone would have grabbed them so to contact me and have me uh, do a video on it. it's pretty cool so we're going to do that today and uh, let's get involved let's get into it and see what's going on with it So we're going to get a look at this weed eater first and uh, Mike was also gracious enough to give me the, uh, the lines for it and there's a couple spare parts here. There's even a manual. My kind of guy saves, saved everything. Uh, so I appreciate that. Uh, so there's some extra line there uh, that we could use. So uh, I almost feel pressured to get this thing working now so we can make it functional. So I guess we're going to start with uh, probably taking the filter off, maybe doing a spark plug test. Uh, there is no gas in it. Uh, so I guess we'll start at the air filter and uh, we'll go from there. Alright, so we have our trimmer here. And uh, first thing I'm going to do is just take a look at the air filter. I'm going to just do the basic stuff. Uh, so take the air filter off. And it's actually in really good shape. It's just a piece of foam. You know, there is a little bit of oil or gas on there not a big deal but I do notice that when I smell it it smells more like uh, varnish it doesn't smell like gas at all so my guess is that there's probably some blockage in the carburetor so uh, we're gonna have to remove that and give it a good cleaning I did notice as well that inside the tank which also smells like like a varnish you know, almost like when you do your house, when you uh, refinish the wood in your house. It's, it just smells like varnish. Uh, there was a piece that I see in the tank here. I'm going to try to fish out with the needle nose pliers. It's just kind of sitting in there. Not quite sure where it goes yet, but we'll get it out of there. You can kind of see. I don't know if you can see that. It's just a small little piece. It might just be a nipple that goes on the end of the uh, the line inside of there. It's real small. So we'll have to find out what, uh, what that goes to. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get... It's going to require, it looks like a, an Allen wrench there and we're going to get that carburetor off and get some carb cleaner and clean it up and see if we can't get this thing running alright so we have our allen wrench here and we're just going to remove these bolts now this could be a short video or it could be a long video we'll see but I think what I'm going to have to do is clean that tank out as well and uh, maybe flush something through the lines now I do press the primer and it is moving through the the line so that's a good sign and the primer bulb is in really good shape sometimes you'll find them where they're cracked but the primer bulb here is uh, nice and shiny it looks like it's in great shape so let me continue taking this cover off here the air filter cover 
It is super hot out here. I'm just sweating, sweating to death. I'm eager to uh, dig into this. So I figure, why not? I literally just uh, picked this up probably about an hour ago. So, all right. So we have the cover off there. I'm just going to stick the bolts in there and keep them together. And uh, it's that easy. You can see this uh, is a pretty common carburetor. We're going to go ahead and take these lines off. But we're going to twist them with these. You don't want to just go ripping the line off because you'll damage. You know, you could tear this line, so we don't want to do that. So we're just kind of going to twist it with these outward and slide it off. So that one's good. And then uh, we're going to have to remove the, uh, the trigger line here. It's relatively easy. You just turn the carburetor and that will pull off. And so I think we'll go with this line here coming into the primer bulb. So it's as simple as that. We have the carburetor. Uh, pretty common carburetor, Zama. I actually have a new one in a box, and they're really cheap too. Actually, I think I got one for it was twelve dollars, and it came with the line, and it came with a bunch of other stuff. But we're going to take this bottom cover off, and there'll be a diaphragm in there, and more than likely, our issue is going to be in here. Uh, so let's uh, get some carb cleaner and we'll go on to the next step. Alright, so we have our carb here and we have some uh, <clears throat> carburetor cleaner, nothing fancy. Uh, so what we're going to do is just take off these screws here. We're going to remove these two screws here. Get a look inside. And uh, a lot of this, uh, what was gas, had come out of the uh, the primer ball. Just kind of pressing it to squirt it all out. And it's in here and it smells. I mean, it's just like varnish. So, but we'll give that a good cleaning once we get this apart. And it's much different than gas. It's very sticky and thick. Set the screws aside there. Now this this is important that that moves. As you can see that it is moving. It's good. And here's the diaphragm. You want to be gentle with the diaphragm. You don't want to tear that because if you do, you're going to need a new one. See if we can't peel that off as around the edge as gentle as we can. So far so good. Let's get it around the edge. just concerned that it was tearing. It's very delicate material. I want to be real gentle. And even this is very uh, stinky. So we're going to start with this. We'll just clean this up a little bit. Get 
get some of that varnish stuff off of it. You can see the blackness just coming off of this. Now we're going to try it. See if we can't make this work. It is going up and down. Now that could be just because I'm using this uh, carb cleaner on this. You don't want to get too crazy with the carb cleaner on this rubber. But it is still a little bit sticky. But it does look like it's... There you go, it's a little bit better. You know, it's still a little bit sticky. What I might do is uh, maybe put it in some gas for a minute or two. But we'll set that aside for now. You can see the black from it. So we're going to concentrate on this. And just, we'll get this some spraying here. We can spray through this hole want to be careful with your eyes. And we'll get some in here. And I think what we'll do is take off this line as well. See if we can't get some of this carb cleaner going through the bulb as well. Clean this line out here. And it should come out. It's coming out the other side there. That'll give that a good cleaning there. pump the bulb get any excess out of there I do notice now that the bulb is actually broken so that's not a good thing we're gonna have to uh, gonna have to replace that originally it looked like it was in good shape but I guess probably because it wasn't used for a while after I had pressed it a few times it broke so now I do have another primer bulb that might work for this. So uh, let me go inside and see if I can't locate that other primer bulb. So if we can replace that. Because I did buy a, another carburetor and it did come with a couple primer bulbs. So uh, let me go check out my supply, see what I can find and uh, we'll move on to the next step. Alright guys, so looking further into this carburetor here. Uh, the bulb, uh, once I had pressed it a few times, it had basically broken. And then I was trying to get the line uh, straightened out on the tank. And actually the line had broken. I don't know if you could see. You know, this piece of line seems okay, but the others were just dry rotted and broke. Uh, I do happen to have, and I think it might be a better idea, because this carburetor has some type of auto choke mechanism here and uh, typically you'd have a bulb like this with two screws and you can actually replace the bulb. In fact this kit that I had bought for I think it was $12 uh, for another trimmer I never used the carburetor. Uh, they're basically the same uh, carburetors. The only difference is this has this raised up uh, primer button and this primer button is built right into the carburetor um, whereas here you can see you know some screws there and there's a plate but no uh, no way to put a primer bulb there so this is a brand new carburetor um, the only difference is also is this is a has a manual this is actually for a Ryobi trimmer 
and it has a manual choke which I don't think would be a big deal uh, if I line this up here you know it would definitely fit on there uh, the only conflict I see is this uh, cover here that might get in the way of that uh, adjustment there, the choke adjustment. Uh, I can either remove it and put some kind of key. Maybe I can trim this down. You know, maybe I have to have this open when I initially start it. And then once I get the choke into position, I can close it. Um, but I think I'm going to go this new carburetor route and give it a try instead of having to order a new uh, part here. Uh, what's nice is this kit here, I only paid it, like I said, $12 for it. actually has some new line here. And there are other pieces of line as well. So I think I'm going to be able to utilize this line. Uh, we are going to have to replace I put new line in there. That's not a big deal. And the fuel filter that was at the bottom is soaking right now. It doesn't appear to be in that bad a shape. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and mount this carburetor up. We're going to put the two bolts in there. Uh, we don't have to worry about the function of the carburetor besides maybe some adjustments for the idle because it is a brand new carburetor. Uh, so I'm going to see if I can dig up some more of this line and uh, we'll have to replace the line um, and then we'll hook the line up uh, in the meantime I'll clean the tank out and uh, we'll go from there uh, but uh, I don't see any reason why this won't run so uh, we'll be back once we get the, uh, the parts that we need here and we'll continue on with this weed eater repair uh, from Mike so uh, stay tuned and we'll be back all right so I had put the uh, the new carburetor that I had laying around uh, and you could see this manual choke here uh, it's just plastic that connects to here that can always be cut down because I did notice when I closed this that uh, I can't access it but it's it's hanging up on this plastic cover so uh, I think what we can do once we verify that it's going to work, uh, which it should, it's uh, basically the same carburetor, uh, just kind of a slightly different configuration. Then we'll cut this down and then it should move. Uh, we have the primer button. As you can see inside of there, the primer button is there. Uh, we also hooked up uh, some new lines here. This is actually one of the old ones, which seems it's still flexible. So I don't think we're going to have a problem with that. And that will be the return line. That doesn't have to be very long at all. You have two holes in the tank. One's going to be for the return. And the other one, uh, the filter will go on the end and it will sit and draw the fuel. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove this tank. Uh, we'll clean it up. Uh, we're going to use a torque screwdriver. Two, two screws here. Just take the tank right off. Uh, let me just get a better view here. There we go. We'll take uh, there's one here and one here. We'll take that tank off, give it a nice cleaning. Uh, it's also easier to get uh, to pull this line through those holes with some needle nose pliers through the inside. Uh, we're just going to cut a triangle. I had done a video before where you just cut a little triangle on the end. It helps kind of get it started. And then we'll pull it through. Um, but otherwise we have our throttle cable hooked up and uh, it's exactly in the same position as the old uh, carburetor so that shouldn't be an issue um, so yeah let's remove the tank and uh, probably get back to this tomorrow I'll let the tank uh, clean it out let it dry out and then we'll put the new line in and uh, we'll put some gas in it and see what happens so we'll be back for the next step shortly all right, so I've removed the gas tank, and there is some, you can see it in there, some debris. 
Uh, you can see how nasty this liquid is that came out of it. And this is actually the fuel line. And you can see as I touch it, you can see it's just breaking apart. You see that? So uh, we're going to continue on, clean this tank out, let it dry, and uh, we'll move on to the next step. And uh, as I said, we'll see if we can get this thing running. I think there's a good chance once we correct all these things that it will run. Um, you know, I could have bought another bulb for it, but uh, the point is, is to try to save some money. And if you have something laying around, you know, it might have a slightly different configuration, uh, but we can get it working. Like I said, it's uh, I don't need an automatic choke. I can, you know, do it manually. Uh, so not a big deal. All right, so we have our tank here. The tank's all been cleaned up. Um, basically, if you have, you know, I just use soap or put some purple power, shake it up a bunch of times. Um, then make sure you rinse it really, really good. And uh, summer's a perfect time to do this, but you can put it out and it'll dry fairly quickly. Uh, but and if you see, you're going to have two holes here where the lines go in. And uh, the top hole is going to be the return line for the primer. And the bottom hole will be uh, for the line that's going to, the filter will connect to it. And when the filter will sit, you know, I like to have it down here. Because uh, when you're using it, typically the tank will be like that. It'll be like that. So, there's just the two bolts that I put back in there so I don't lose them. Uh, I have the two lines here. Uh, one is a piece of... Uh, the old line which seems like it's in pretty good shape it's not breaking when I bend it or anything so we'll give it a shot uh, the trick is basically just to take some needle nose pliers and uh, first we're going to take scissors and just kind of cut uh, you know we'll cut like a triangle on the end of the uh, line and it helps to make it easier to get it through the hole first and then the needle nose pliers will put uh, inside and kind of pull the line through and we can always connect the filter afterwards by using the needle nose pliers bringing the line up and then dropping the filter in uh, so let's go ahead and do that I hope I have a good view here of it let's move this out of the way so we have the tank and I'm just gonna cut like a little I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of like a little point on the end. And this is going to be the it's the longer line. The other line really only needs to go in a quarter of an inch or so. Uh, it doesn't have to be that long at all. And that's going to be this the short one. So I'm going to try to get this started. It can be difficult, but once it's in there. And you can get inside with the uh, pliers. It makes it a lot easier. Might have to trim a little, another piece off of it. And we'll, what we'll do is once it's in there, we'll cut this straight, because you don't want it like that inside there. This is just to get it started. And this just takes a little patience to, to get it going in there. It's not easy. Just push it in as far as you can. Sometimes just putting a little oil on that would help it. Kind of help get it started if that's necessary. Not too much, just a little bit of like 3-in-1 oil or something. or to help it slide in there better. Alright, so I've been pulling it through and it's just about where I want it to be here and I've left enough line so that on here 
when it goes back on it's going to connect and if you can see there's going to be two connections here one for the tank and one for the return so it was a little bit of a struggle getting in there you know a little bit of you know three in one oil or something on there will help pull it through and now I can pull up the end here we can get this piece out of here then we can trim trim it so it's straight because here's where the filter is going to go on and we'll just I think I'll just leave that out because I'm going to put the filter on after I uh, put the other one in so like I said the other one's shorter hopefully it won't break because it may not be as flexible as the the brand new line is but we're going to feed that in and it really only has to poke in you know like it's a return line so at the top maybe a quarter of an inch or so so I'm going to do the same procedure I'm going to cut kind of a triangle on the end get it started in the hole pull it through there and then uh, we'll go from there alright so as you can see now it was a little bit of a struggle to pull these through and there's a reason for that is because it has to create a seal as this rubber expands you're pulling it through there so the oil did help uh, to get it through there we have the lines hooked up going into the carburetor uh, we have the line hanging out here uh, that's going to draw fuel from the tank and we're going to put the filter uh, on the end of there and drop it back in and then we're going to take these uh, Torx screws, there's two of them that hold the tank on and we're going to put them back in so I'm going to do that now and then we'll put the fuel filter on make sure that that fits nice and snug and then uh, we're going to go from there I think the next step then is we'll put some gas in it and we'll pull it over and see what happens but I first want to examine the spark plug so I think maybe I think maybe we'll do that next just to make sure there's spark uh, we'll take a look at the spark plug here pull it out examine it clean it up a little bit uh, so let's do it all right so we have our fuel filter here that I've cleaned up and I've actually blown through it and there's some airflow so it should be all right if we have an issue uh, we'll go ahead and replace it but uh, basically just stick it on the end of the line make sure it's nice and tight there and then you can just drop it back in to the tank just like that now hopefully we can see the line in there that it's going to be in the right position Like I said, I prefer it at the bottom of the tank uh, because you typically be holding it this way. So you want to have it at the bottom. So we're good there. We clean the cap up. Cap's all clean. We'll go ahead and put that cap on. Uh, it's a little late at night right now for me to be starting this thing up. I don't think the neighbors would appreciate that too much. But uh, I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, remove the spark plug and uh, we'll see what shape that's in. Now we're just using a spark plug socket, nothing fancy. And it looks like the spark plug has been replaced, which is nice. So it's a brand new spark plug. As you can see that. So that's nice so uh, I could check the gap on that but I think we'll just uh, give it a shot anyway we're just going to check it for spark here see if we can get a spark out of it now it 
might be a little hard because there's really nothing metal to go to here. And I want to have a view on the camera as well. Uh, Alright, so I've stuck a screwdriver in there to ground it to the, uh, the engine. And I'm just going to turn the light out here. And uh, let's see if we get a spark from the spark plug. Hopefully that's dark enough. It's definitely sparking. Alright, so we know we have spark. If it's a brand new spark plug, uh, it appears that the, uh, the coil in there is good. We are getting spark. We're going to put the spark plug back in. So we know we only need a couple more elements for this to work. We need compression, spark, fuel, and air. So we did correct the uh, fuel system, hopefully, with the carburetor, although it's a, it's a little different from the original carburetor, which has this uh, automatic choke with the primer button. Uh, now I could have went ahead and ordered you know a new primer button which would come with this shaft but I happen to have another uh, Zama carburetor laying around that looks like it'll fit the bill and we'll find out so I'm just going to tighten this down and then what we'll do is tomorrow we're gonna put some gas in it and we'll see if this thing's gonna run all right so we've cleaned up the shroud here it looks like new you can see it here and we've removed the uh, string cutter from it and we're going to clean it up on this wire wheel. One of the best things you can have is a wire wheel with a grinder on the other side in the garage. You can clean things up so we're going to do that now with this uh, and then we're going to move on to starting it up and see what we got. Alright, as you can see, it came out pretty good. Tune in on it here. Looks like a brand new cutter. Front and back, we got it all cleaned up. So uh, we have two uh, screws here that mount it to the uh, shroud. And those are going to be an Allen wrench. So we're going to attach that back on and then uh, maybe we'll remove the shaft uh, down by where the uh, string attaches and we'll clean that up a little bit and then uh, finally the moment of truth that'll actually be the Torx driver. There's several things that use an Allen wrench and then 
several things that use the Torx driver. And this is one of them here. So we're just going to attach it. And it doesn't even hurt to put maybe a, a thin layer, wipe it with a cloth with some oil just to keep that from rusting. So we're all set there. Alright, next thing we'll do is just we've removed the shaft here. Uh, we're just going to clean this bracket up a little bit. There's a little bit of rust on it. I don't know if you can see that. I'm working here at night with some lights in the garage and it's late so uh, the lighting might not be all that great here but you can see the rust on there so we're just going to clean that up a little bit. Alright, so here's the moment of truth. Uh, we have it all cleaned up. Uh, we did clean up some stuff on the wire wheel. Uh, we cleaned up the uh, motor a little bit. Everything's good to go, so we're going to give it a start up and uh, see if we can get it running. Alright, so uh, overall it runs great. Um, just to recap a couple of the things that I did with it uh, was originally I was going to clean the original carburetor and uh, in the process of cleaning it I discovered that the primer bulb was cracking just from me pressing it and the lines were brittle and broke so I replaced the lines and we had a carburetor laying around uh, a lot of these carburetors are identical uh, through a series of different models. So rather than, uh, you know, I did try to clean up the carburetor originally, but uh, really didn't trust the diaphragm in there. So rather than spend some money, uh, we just popped a new carburetor that was sitting around anyway. So that worked out good. Uh, we did clean up uh, with the wire wheel. We cleaned it up. It looks like new. Um, so yeah, overall, it runs great. It'll be a nice addition, a nice spare uh, weed eater around the house. Uh, so I think our next victim uh, is going to be this electric trimmer. Now Mike says that uh, this isn't working, and indeed he is correct. Uh, so we just plugged it in and uh, we're not getting anything from it. So I think our next video, what we're going to do is take the housing off of it and we're going to inspect the motor. Uh, but I'm going to get in there and I'm going to process this video and get it uploaded to YouTube 
and I want to thank Mike again for uh, his generosity of just, uh, you know, giving me the equipment rather than throwing it away. So thanks again, Mike. And uh, if you guys like the video, hit like. Uh, subscribe to the channel for future videos. And we'll see you next time.